What's going on guys? So in today's video, I have another interview for, for you. It's a recruiter interview. Now, I got some comments with the last recruiter interview that I was kind of being passive aggressive is what the comment was. And the thing is like, you have to be, you have to stand your ground. Otherwise, recruiters tend to throw you at whatever they can and they'll try to convince you to take the job because it's in their best interest because they get paid. Not necessarily because it's in your best interest. Now, I'm not saying all recruiters are like this, but I've had a lot of experiences with recruiters that haven't been conducive to my career goals and career paths. Um, and specifically in this example, she tries to talk me into a position that is all in office. And before this, I said that I prefer remote positions, flexibility, uh, you know, more of that modern type of development style. And she continued to try to talk me into the position, but it's, it's whatever, it's, it's their job, it's what they do. They're trying to put food on the table just as well. There was another moment where she tried to tell me that React was the same as Angular. And there was another moment where she tried to tell me that because an office is an open office, it uses Agile and Scrum. What? I don't know. I was, I was confused, but this is just my experience. Another interview with a recruiter. If anything, you can learn how to talk to them, ask questions, stand your ground. So the whole purpose of these videos is to help you guys out and Hopefully you can learn something about how to ask questions and how to handle these interviews and not just get so wrapped up in your head about it and just sit there and just hope that you say the right thing the entire time. Cause that's not, that's not what it's about. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay to be nervous, but you know, just, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to be a little bit confident. Don't be cocky. Don't be a jerk. But so tomorrow I have an interview at Facebook. So I'll have that up for you guys to watch as well. If you want to get interviews like me, Check out my resume and cover letter. That's literally what I use, almost copy and paste every time, or I'll change my cover letter, but they're all there. They're all templates you can go. They support the channel. So if you're interested, you know, go check those out. Shout out to all the patrons that support the channel. We have a Discord if you wanna talk to me, ask me questions, let me know, give me feedback or anything like that, or shoot me an email. Link for that is in the description. Appreciate you guys, and I hope you enjoy it. See you in the next one. It's currently 12.12, and we're scheduled for 12.15. She reached out to me, and uh, I set this up, so, Hopefully you guys can get something out of this and how we can negotiate. I tried looking up the company that she works, but not a whole lot of information there. Hello? I was just sending you a message. For some reason, I've tried it a couple times, it wasn't letting me dial you, and so I don't know if it was just my phone or what was going on. Yeah, I noticed. I just looked and it said missed call, but I didn't I didn't see anything. I was like, what's, what's happening? But it's all good. We're here now. So what are you kind of, what's kind of prompting you to want to make a change or maybe looking for a new position? More responsibility. The tech stack that I'm working with is a little bit antiquated, and from the yeah. description that you messaged me, it was Angular, which is a little bit more state of the art, kind of cutting edge, yeah. and which is what I enjoy. For sure, like you want that, and and all, I can send you the full details too, just to your email. That way you can like really look it over and see what you think as far as it being a fit. Um, but I mean, it's a front end position, which that's kind of what you specialize with, right? Yeah, I'm a visual person. I can do full stack, but I prefer front end. What is your experience like with Angular, uh, you know, so far? Specifically Angular in the professional capacity, I haven't really been doing it. I've been doing it for side projects, and I've done it before. Um, I've done a lot of other similar MVCs like Angular. What was your experience like, or did you like, did you enjoy Ruby? Do you, have you kept up with that, or is that, you know, what's kind of, what have you been looking at as far as that? Uh, for Ruby, I actually teach Ruby, so I have to keep up with it, because students ask me questions, and I'm like, uh, that's a good question, so it yeah. requires me to keep up with what's going on there. So uh, I do that almost uh, every day. Okay, very cool. For this client actually, they, um, that's, you know, they are kind of a Ruby shop. So, I mean, I think having that skill, that's one of those things where, you know, would be a nice to have type of thing. Someone who has some Ruby experience as well. Okay, yeah, maybe we could see if we could leverage that instead. Yeah, that as well, and you know, so that would be one option too. How would you just just kind of giving you know, as far as the developing side of Ruby, you know, versus the teaching side? Where, how would you rate yourself with with Ruby on Rails? What's what's the scale? <laughs> one to ten. One to ten development with Ruby on Rails, uh, maybe maybe an eight, eight and a half. Okay. Yeah. And then, and so you, did you start using it in like 2016, or when did you start using Ruby? Well, it was my very 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 first job. So, 2015. But yeah, I think that would be good. And then I noticed that you have the React as well. Like, what's your experience with React? I know that's pretty similar as well to Angular in some ways. Um, so I did React for a government job, and it was React okay. in PHP. It was a full stack role, 
Uh, oh, cool. But then that was during the election. Election happened. Company ran out of money because all of our contacts got swapped out for the new administration. Um, but I did that for about a year and a half. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Um, well, let's do this then. Um, let me send you the full details. Where have you been looking or what have you been targeting as far as like an income range? Probably somewhere in the 90s. Okay, cool. Um, and would you would you look at a position, just, just out of curiosity, so, you know, obviously the front end stuff, would you look at a Ruby on Rails position as well? Sure. Is it just full Ruby? Is it half... Half Rails, half JavaScript, half, I mean... I They've got a Ruby on Rails position, which is like a developer role. That's just like a Ruby on, Ruby developer. And then they've got this Angular position. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm open to it. So, I mean, yeah, it's the same client, so I'm just saying, you know, they may say, hey, would you be interested in this? That's why I kind of am just approaching that. Um, and then where are you Where are you located at? Where would you be commuting from? Um, so it's probably, actually, probably a pretty easy commute. Um, and the name of the company is called... I don't know if I mentioned that to you before. I don't know if you've ever applied there or heard of them. No, I haven't heard it. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So they work in kind of like the um, architecture, green, building material type of thing, um, but very established company. I think they were the 90s or something like that. It started in like 91, 92. Um, so it's definitely an established place with a really established development model and development. What do the steps look like as far as after this call and if we move forward with the... With everything. Yeah, so what we would do is based on that, then we'll, we go ahead. I just do like a little write up about you, which we may, and we may want to, you know, I haven't gotten to look at your resume yet. So depending on which position we feel like is the best fit, the Angular one might be, they're looking for someone who's kind of like an Angular, like, super, like a superstar. So I feel like the Angular one probably won't work. Now, maybe it will because you've got the Ruby as well. Um, you know, so I'm happy to even kind of broach to them saying, hey, even if even if neither of these positions are 100% fit, I still would be happy to like basically take your, your resume to the development team and be like, hey, you're the guy who does Ruby, does Angular, you know, a lot of the skills that they're looking for. So even if neither of these are like a, a spot on fit, I would still be comfortable talking with them about you as a candidate, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because Ruby's tough to find. Um, Ruby's tough to find, and, and obviously, but let, let me send this over. Feel free to look them up. You know, we, we do have to apply on your own. It just confuses the process. Um, but then basically, we're going to be sending over, you know, what you're looking for as far as what, what you're looking to make, um, just some information about you as a candidate, you know, why you're looking to leave, what you're hoping to, you know, how you're hoping to grow. And then um, from that point, typically, they would, they would set up an interview if they're interested. So... Pretty pretty fast process actually. Is it a contract to hire or full full hire? Direct hire? No, nope, it's a direct hire position, um, and they get they usually move pretty quickly. You know, in the interviewing stages, um, and if if you're the, they're looking for, you know, they'll offer real quickly as well. Out of curiosity, if this one doesn't work out, is there anything else that might fit my experience just from you glancing at my? Probably. Probably. Yeah, I think so, and and that's and again that's why. I'll get the resume. I'll have a couple conversations with some of us. So we're kind of split up here at PDS. We only staff in Utah. Um, so most of my clients have been to their offices. I've seen the culture, kind of what they're like. But I work with candidates, and then I work with um, other recruiters who work just with the clients to kind of avoid that conflict of interest. But basically what I'll do is once I get your resume, I'll go talk with them. I'll look over the list of jobs that we have and even clients in the past and see if there's something that, you know, if this isn't a fit or um, maybe there's a couple of options that you want to pursue, then at that point, then we start looking at several options. All right. From your experience, what does the company culture look like? Anything I should, like, look into? I, normally, I research company values, their mission statement, yeah. all of that stuff to prepare for the interview. Uh, do you have any, some tips I could look for in the meantime? Um, so I really like, and, and I, I mean, I, I think they're, they're more in that space of the modern workplace where it's, where it's kind of more of a casual environment. You know, a couple of times I've been, you know, just sitting in their front waiting for like a candidate or something to walk into an interview. I'll get there kind of early. And I just see people interact. And to me, like, it's a very, um, but people seem happy at their jobs. They seem positive. Um, I definitely think they are looking kind of for culture fit. Um, but from what I've heard from anyone who's interviewed there, even if they didn't get the job, they're like, oh, I would love to work with these guys. Um, you know, just, it's just really great experience in, in interviewing as well. Pretty relaxed, good, good people to work with. 
So I've only been in the front of theirs, um, so I can't really tell you what the development side, like what it would look like. Um, I'm trying to remember because I, I just can't say for sure because I can't remember. Um, but I want, but I do believe they are an agile um, uh, scrum agile. I want to say is, is kind of what you get. So typically, those are more open or you're there kind of grouped up in development teams. I think that's probably the case there. Okay. Um, they do want on site as well. So one thing is, is they're not, uh, they're not, they like their people there, and they like everyone working together. So they're not a remote place. Sure. I mean, I'm not that far, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, so, but I think, I think you'd like it for sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good culture. Okay. How many steps is the interview? What does that look like? Um, I've seen them do a phone interview and one interview, and then I've also seen them do two on site interviews. Um, the time when they did two on-site interviews was a little bit different. I basically had a candidate who had a lot of job opportunities. I think they would have offered him after the first interview, but he essentially needed to get through. He would kind of let us know up front that he had several interviews he was going to, going to do before he made a decision. So they basically did it as a two-step process because he needed to complete his interviews prior to making a decision. Um, if not, I think they probably would have offered him after the first. So I would say at max, probably a two-interview process, maybe a phone and then in person, maybe two in person. Does the interview consist of like, I, I, I assume I go in and meet the CTO or some developers and then we have like a some sort of, is, it, is there a whiteboarding, a take-home test, uh, and then I, I guess there'd maybe be a culture fit? I don't remember a take-home test. I would imagine there'll be some whiteboard or some sort of coding challenge or, you know, see how you think, something like that. Um, and pretty much I think you're there with a the development team. That's one of the interesting things about is that you're not, um, like, I'm not saying they don't have an HR. They do have an HR. But when they reach out to us for these searches, it's their development team, like their develop the manager of that team is the one reaching out to us. So that's why we get decisions made pretty quickly because essentially the people who are going to be working with you are truly the people making the decision on you being hired. Okay. Could I ask, like, yeah. uh why they're expanding so fast or what would I be hired on to work for? Do you know, like, they got a new project, a new um, deal? Yeah, I don't on this one. I want to say with this one they had someone, it seems like someone relocated to another state um, for this opening. And Ruby is, with Ruby, for instance, that's a very tough bill. This angular position um, is really just them looking for that kind of top, top, top level talent, someone who's just an expert, you know, on Angular 5, Angular 6, or whatever. So that, that I don't think will be as much of the fit. Um, but the Ruby on Rails or possibly like a mid type of position, I think would be where you would probably fall within their kind of um, where they would be looking, you know, in that 90 to 100, maybe 105 range. All right. What about like, is it, was it just direct Ruby all the time? Like how big is the company? Would I be wearing different hats? It's pretty good size. It's pretty established. Um, I'll send you the Ruby on Rails job position so you can see what it looks like. I'll send you the job description for the Ruby um, and then we'll see about the other um, other positions as well. Because again, it doesn't just have to be this client. We have clients all throughout the valley. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thanks for connecting. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to talking with you soon. Yeah, same. Um, have a nice Halloween. Hey, you too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> right. So, um, this was a good one. This company was a good one. It's interesting that she didn't really know. She kind of stuttered there. She was like, is, I was like, is it open office? And she started talking about agile and what? And then she told me it was from 90 to 92 and then to 105. And I don't know. I, I don't really know if she understood what she was talking about the entire time, but she was nice. And I think this was productive. I think I learned something. I feel a little bit more confident every time I do this. Good practice. And ask more kind of revealing questions. Probably questions that most people don't ask, but I'm concerned about. Especially if I, you know, if I was going to one of these places, I would want you guys to know that information. But maybe you might be a little bit too scared to ask because you really want the job. But this is for you guys. I want to ask the questions. I want to ask the hard questions, the most transparent questions, uh, or that require them to be transparent with me at least. So... If you like this video, you know what to do.
smash the sub, I'm trying to get to 100k by the end of the year. I don't know if that's going to happen, you know, but who knows? We, we'll keep trying, keep doing this. I got more interviews coming. I got a Facebook interview here pretty soon. If you want a resume and cover letter, they're on my website. You can go check them out. They support the channel. This is my full-time gig to help you guys out, so it's all about that. We have a Discord if you want to join that. Link for that is in the description. You can come ask me questions. Happy to answer, happy to help you out. Shout out to all the patrons that support the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you're interested in supporting the channel, maybe you can check that out. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next one.